What is up guys, Apathy back in the building today with another video. Today is a great video because we're going to be talking about how to improve your aim on Call of Duty World War 2 and shoot straight like this. And it's going to be a great video because, you know, I love helping you guys. I love giving you guys some tips. And I think with these tips, you guys will start shooting better, aiming better, winning more gunfights. And to make it easier, I'm going to be going order five tips, five exact tips and go one by one from best to worse i guess you could say but the most important to the least important straight down the list let's get right into this let's talk about one of the most important things how to aim better so first things first before you even go into a game before you even switch to your classes or before anything before anything you got to make sure your sensitivity is right and this is probably the most important thing in call of duty that a lot of people seem to overlook as a submachine gun player i think you should be playing on 5.5 sensitivity 6.6 six at most 5.6 i don't know if you're into that type of stuff I like 5.5. Five. I think it's the perfect sensitivity. 4.4 four is pretty damn slow. I wouldn't recommend it. And 7.7 seven or higher is just way too fast. 5.5, five, five, I think it's the perfect sensitivity. If you're an ARR player, loves to use LMGs, assault rifles, whatever, I think 4.4 four, four is the best sensitivity you could play on. It's not too slow, but it's not too fast, which just allows you to just get that long distance gunfights and allows you to really just shred people from far away. Also, make sure all of this is enabled, okay? Auto weapon switch, I don't think this really matters really. But make sure aim assist rotation and aim assist slowdown is enabled. Thank you. So now that we're done talking about sensitivities, which, like I said, the most important thing, you know, as soon as you adjust your sensitivity, next important thing is centering. Now, what is centering? Centering is basically as you go around the map, you're keeping your the middle of your reticle or the middle of your crosshairs, not reticle. Uh, you're keeping the middle of it wherever someone's about to be and you're just keeping it sort of at a mid-level. So let's say... I'm coming around this corner. I'm not. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna be like this, or I'm not gonna be like this a little bit high up. You have to make sure your centering is really good. Now, this little difference could be the difference maker, or this little difference could be the difference maker. You want to be like right here, for example, because like this little thing, like you snap in right away, you're probably too. You, oh, I mean, the body's obviously running. You might shoot. You might miss because you're shooting his legs. You get me? You want to be aiming right in the center of everywhere. So you sort of like, as you're running around the map, you want to always be in the middle, sort of in the center, and just sort of like centering everywhere as you go around the map, and just maneuvering like this. But then whenever, you know, the, the location changes, the terrain, you know, or, you know, you, the heights, or, you know, you may be going up the stairs, then you obviously change it. See, now I'm coming up the stairs, now I sort of, all of a sudden, I aim higher. You see, I aim right in the center of the stairs. And then you go back to the middle, then you want back stairs, back to the center high. You get what I'm saying? So... The, the, the stairs is a good example to show you guys what I mean. It changes, it varies depending on the map where you're going, and it depends if you're going up a staircase or, you know, if you're just going around the map. Or, here, let's say for example, you know, you know someone's always here, right? Or let's say you know someone's here. Okay. Oh my God, I got. Let me turn on this kid real quick. Let me turn on this kid real quick. A little schmuck. But let's say you know someone's there. You're gonna come around the corner, basically centered and there already. Like if you're just ready, you know, ready to shoot him as soon as you see him. So come around the corner, boom, centered. Come around the corner, boom, centered. So you're keeping it sort of the middle. So it really depends also the location. But you're going to basically come around the corner like this, okay? If you want to kind of like snap in, like kind of just check it real quick. You're not going to you're not gonna go around the corner like this. If you think someone's there, truly there, or you, see, you just saw shots, you're going to center it like this. Getting ready to aim in. Obviously, if you 100% know someone is up there, then you might, you know, you might just pre-emit right away. But that's what centering is. Centering is extremely important while maneuvering around the map or running around the map. It's going to help you win more gunfights just because you're ready. Uh, to hit a good shot on someone, you're just ready to aim in, ready to snap on someone. And honestly, in World War II, snapping on people is sometimes better than pre-aiming. People go like, why can't I just sit here and pre-aim a kill? Well, you know, cameraing in this game and, you know, people just coming around the corner, it feels like you get joked. It's just not always a good thing, especially if you're not in a head glitch. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend you just sit here in the middle of the map and just, like, pre-aim someone around the corner. If someone comes around the corner right now, he will probably kill you just from cameraing you. All right, now that we're done with tip number two, which was centering, and tip number one, which was sensitivity, we're going to tip number three, which is just playing a lot. Now, obviously, this is obvious, but a lot of people don't understand, and a lot of people don't want to put in the hard work of just playing a lot, shooting your gun a lot. Like, whenever you first start playing... You're obviously not going to have a good shot. Maybe you're going to struggle a bit. And it, it requires a lot of practice, man. It requires a lot of shooting, a lot of gunning, you know, like just getting in a lot of gunfights. It's just like any game, any game they want to get better at. The more you engage, the more you get in engagements, the more you're going to get better, the more you're going to understand, the, the, the better your shot's going to be. It's just, it's in any single, it's in every game. So you want to play a lot. You want to grind. Uh, tip I used to do, and I, I always recommend people do, is if you don't like public matches that much or you really just want to solely just practice your shot and not 
not be annoyed by people like RPGing you, C4ing you, streaking you. A good tip is just play bots. Play bots for 20, 30 minutes. You know, you can put a limited time or maybe aim for a goal. Goals are always good. Makes you a little bit more motivated. Like, oh, I'm going to get a 200 bot kill game. 200 kills doesn't take that long. Probably takes like 15, 20 minutes. And it's going to it's gonna keep your shot hot. It's going to keep your shot warm. You're just going to get better. But on top of that, you know, just shooting bots or just going playing pubs, rank play, whatever it is. Just, just continuously shooting. A big Another big reason why this is so important and so good, just think about it this way. Let's say there's a lot of routine kills, okay? So every time I come in here, I know there's going to be a guy right here, a guy right here, or a guy right here, or a guy right here. So let's say I'm coming in this hill. It's going to eventually, you know, I'm, I might suck at it sometimes, right? He might have the better angle. I might, I might not understand how to sort of approach this gunfight. Or sort of how to like center myself into that gunfight. And the more I get into that situation, I die, die, die. Suddenly, I'm starting to get the kill. Okay, I die, get the kill, get the kill, die, get the kill. And, I, and out of nowhere, my percentages just start increasing, increasing. And now I'm starting to kill this guy a lot. I'm just like understanding like how to position myself, how to sort of aim in, uh, where to look at. So that's why playing a lot is also important. It allows you to understand a lot of these routine kills and not only get them, but understand how to play the situation a little better, understand how to, how to snap on people. Like, for example, like, just in a head glitch, let's say right here, like, when I first, when I first, uh, when I first started playing, like, hitting the shot would be hard, right? Like, I maybe, I might not center around the corner good enough, or I might not just, like, I don't know, like, it's, it's difficult for me to hit that shot. But the more I got into the situation, and the more my, and the better my shot got, I'm just, I just get ready, like, I see, like, I'm automatically aiming in on the heady, like, basically where his head would be. So that's, like, sort of, like, kind of where you want to get to. That's why playing a lot is extremely important. It's like obvious. It's obvious, but I'm trying to explain to you guys in more detail why it's why it's important. It, it really helps you get those routine kills because you get into you get into a lot of those awkward gunfights and those weird situations. You guys don't want to talk about. It's not only about the routine kills, but it could be really those weird engagements, like weird gunfights, and like corner to corner or something like that. But since you played so much and since you you've been in that situation more than the other player has. You're just you're more likely to win it and it's just a very good thing. So make sure you're grinding guys now for tip number four Which is extremely important as well controlling the recoil now. I get this a lot in my stream sometimes in my videos How is your PPSH shooting so straight? Why doesn't it move? It looks like a laser. I don't understand mine doesn't do that well Obviously for one the PPSH. It's not that difficult to control the recoil um isn't as bad especially with grip it's not that difficult at all but obviously i do control the recoil a bit and it's just something a lot of pro players can do well just like in black ops 3 how the vmp had a sort of a little bit of bad recoil sometimes a little random recoil but if you're a very good submachine gun player and you understood how to control the recoil pattern pretty well even though it is kind of random but to to, to the extent you know that you can't control it control it sort of you're you're able to map people you're able to hit some nasty shots and that's just something you know us pro players are good at just to give you an example and you can learn this with any gun the ppsh pattern is very easy it's not really difficult at all as you shoot it sort of slowly goes up and that's a very easy recoil pattern to control because as you can see it just slowly goes up and it's not even like crazy it's it slowly goes up so all you have to do when you're shooting the PPSH is sort of pull down a little bit. So on top of you aiming, obviously you're aiming for the most part, you want to kind of like pull down very slightly to the point where it's it's not recoil. It's not really going up anymore. Now it's just sort of like steady in, in place. So that's something that you guys just have to get used to with time. Uh, I, I feel like it goes hand in hand with playing a lot. The more you play, the better you're going to understand. But like I said, the PPSH recoil pattern and it's just, it's stupid easy to control. It's not really difficult at all. It just it's just really doesn't really move. It just goes slightly up. It's very, very easy. Obviously, there's other guns like the bar. The bar has sort of like a random recoil. But in this game, like it's very easy to understand the recoil patterns. It's sort of the recoil. Like the bar is a good example of being very difficult because it does have sort of a random one. Where it just starts like going to the side very quickly and it's, and it's difficult to adjust and really adapt to but for the most part you know like if you if you love a submachine gun i just explained to you how to control the recoil and that's kind of what you want to do with any gun if you can learn understand and sort of get used to the gun and get really good with it and understand how to control the recoil pattern to an extent obviously you can't record uh control every single recoil i understand that part but to an extent if you can sort of control it it will make you hit better shots and you will have a better shot in general so don't forget that. Now for the last tip, tip number five. Now this tip isn't very good, but it's, it's a tip I decided to do because one, I wanted to have five tips. You gotta have the five in there. It makes it look nice, right? 
It's got to have the perfect five. But on top of that, it's just knowledge that in case you guys didn't know, I really wanted to enlighten you about this. So a lot of you guys heard, or at least the majority of you heard of scuff controllers. There's also be battle beavers. There's also other type of controllers. And I'm not saying the controllers, uh, the reason I'm talking about the controllers are because of the sticks. Now, some of you guys may not like the PS4 sticks. Some of you guys might. Um, the default PS4 sticks, that is. Uh, a lot of us pro players like to use scuff sticks, dome sticks even. That's the one I use, which is basically a PS3 controller. If you guys ever had a PS3 or a PlayStation 2, the regular uh, dome sticks. And I'm going to give you guys an example right now of my scuff controller. I use dome sticks. I feel They feel really, really nice and comfortable. Obviously, you got the paddles in the back. But they feel really nice and really comfortable to use. And I just feel like, one, my, my hands, my fingers don't hurt after long days of grinding. I tend to like push down on my sticks really hard and with the with the scuff sticks or regular sticks my thumbs just hurt eventually and two i just feel like i can control the, the sticks really well and it just allows me to have in my opinion a really nice shot i i like to i like to say that i have one of the be better shots than most pros in this game or just in in cod in general and i think for uh, for a reason that people might not think so but i do is because of dome sticks so i think you guys could, should, should know that like scuff controllers have dome sticks um you can also use scuff sticks. You can also change the heights. You know, maybe it, like they say, helps with longer range. Just it's not working. You can always try different sticks. Obviously, not everyone could uh, afford a scuff controller. They're kind of expensive. Maybe you guys, you know. So I understand that part, but it's always there for you, man. So I hope these tips help you guys a ton. I'm pretty sure it will if you just listen to the five tips I gave you guys and work hard on trying to improve your aim and playing more and just going into bot games and understanding centering and all these things and make sure your sensitivity is right and controlling your recall. I, I guarantee you guys your shot will be, will be looking way better. You couldn't come back to this video and be like, wow, app, that, that, wow, app, apathy, whatever you want to call me, Brian Joliasko. You know, whatever you want to call me, you're going to say, wow, those tips actually helped me a lot, man. Thanks, man. My shot's looking really nice. You're going to come back, comment on the video saying, wow, app, you're the best, bro. Thank you for the tips. So. I'm trust, trust me, you're, you're going to, you're going to, but I seriously appreciate you guys for watching the video. Thank you so much. Make sure to leave a like if it really helped you, or if you just want to support me and my channel and I hope you all have a good day. If you want to subscribe as well for some more content, I'm going to be trying to post, um, you know, tip con content when I can, obviously it's a little bit difficult at times, but I'll try my best. And on top of that, you guys know I stream very often. So if you want to, you want to come through twitch.tv slash app, you can whenever I'm live or follow my stream. So, you know, when I go live. Hope you all have a good night. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, my bros.